posicionado eh, en la defensa y bueno, 3 a 0, muy bien, yo creo que fue un muy buen partido, muy lindo partido eh, y estamos sorprendidos porque no sabíamos qué esperar del equipo de Finlandia. So I don't know how much uh, international uh, tournament uh, experience the Finnish team has, but um, to withstand uh, one of the top teams in the world uh, like the Orcas uh, is quite impressive and well done and I think we will see uh, the Finnish team uh, high ranking in this uh, Champions Cup 2016 yeah. here uh, in Berlin. We know that the Germans are uh, experienced, we know the Turkish team might be also on the top uh, uh, teams. Uh, Molde, of course, uh, as always, uh, Orcas, so um, it's, it's looking good and <laughs> very interesting. So next team, uh, next game coming up, uh, what do we have? I'm in the um, we have chat now too. Um, Copenhagen against Barcelona, this is uh, the girls. So we have a women's team, uh, Copenhagen against uh, Barcelona. Barcelona. Both teams from Barcelona at this time here. I mean, men and women. In the years before, normally we had uh, Piranha Stefania Fiel for the men and Barcelona for the girls. Earlier, 10 years ago, Piranha from the women used to come as well. So it's getting dark outside and uh, uh, the game's here, started. Yeah. It's five o'clock now. It's uh, exactly five o'clock here in Berlin. Uh, it's dark in winter and uh, that's cold. the part of uh, uh, the year Lorena doesn't like at all uh, uh, about Germany and I always have to tell her there will be better times and there is a sun in Germany but uh, sometimes she doesn't believe it. So, um, we are quite away from the pool here. We are in the backyard uh, of the pool area um, so we don't see uh, what's going on uh, uh, at the pool. Maybe we later on there are cameras but we don't have a picture yet from the pool area. Uh, maybe later on we'll have pictures from the pool area too. Um, and the game was that already? No, no, the game is not on yet. Uh, we have uh, the next game is Copenhagen from Denmark, Denmark again. Uh, Barcelona, Barcelona in Spanish uh, in white. And um, well, what's your guess about this game? Barcelona, the girls are not uh, one of the strongest team in this tournament, I no, think. No, but they have been growing in the last years and they also have a couple of experienced players. And Barcelona is having also an uh, underwater hockey team. And most of the, 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 and the team playing rugby also plays both. You know that people can see you, right? Yeah, I know. <laughs> I, but I see. I, I Something is happening. So what I was saying is like um, because of the hockey training and the rugby training, I don't know how many of the rugby players have tried underwater hockey, but uh, I started a couple of years ago, and if you play both team, uh, both um, games, really the practical. Okay, this started. I continue with that. So picture. the game started. <laughs> uh, Barcelona against Copenhagen, Denmark against Spain. And uh, again, like in the game before, the men's team Barcelona is in white and Copenhagen is in blue. My guess would be Copenhagen is uh, the dominating team in this game. Um, but you never know. Uh, you don't know which players are in the team. Barcelona could be a totally different team to the one uh, we've seen last year. Um, so now the, the teams are probing each other. Uh, Barcelona is still in ball control getting closer in, building up their attack patterns uh, in front of the Danish basket. And uh, they're in the corner now. One uh, player already in position on the open side, waiting for the ball. Um, for his team uh, made to bring him, uh, bring him out of the ball. Um, but in, in this beginning of a game, the forward checking is always quite forcefully and uh, uh, the, the Spanish really have problems to to get near the Danish basket, and uh, they 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 swim a lot, they pass around a lot, but they are totally disturbed, um, uh, non-stop disturbed by the Danish well, players. There is one the uh, uh, Spanish player now lying with a stomach on the 
uh, Danish basket, but the Danish uh, snatch right the ball in away. The field, yes, and and we're in the middle field and have a, a first counter attack away. from the Danish in direction of uh, the Spanish basket. But the Spanish defense is already in position. Now, one player from uh, Denmark to attack, is and then going two from more the close side. It. So we have a, a, a quite a cluster building on the open side, uh, on the close side uh, of the basket, near the corner. Barcelona just recovered the ball, but it's a dangerous situation. There's no goalkeeper yeah, on the, the goal. Yeah, the defense is, is, was Copenhagen for some seconds almost uh, away, and the, the basket was empty, no defense, no goalkeeper. And uh, still, uh, Denmark is attacking, trying to build slowly up uh, their attack pattern taking a breath uh, on the surface, undisturbed by the Spanish players. And here we go. They go down in the corner from the middle, pass through the middle. Try to, she tries to swim to the open side in direction of the basket, going over the basket in direction uh, of the corner, but has tackled away right over the basket. Yeah. And a uh, call from the referee if, if outside the water. If we compare the it's, way Barcelona uh, is over hard playing. playing free throw against Barcelona. Yeah, they are defending better than the Fidense used to do against the Germans. Yeah. They're having better position game. They know what they're doing, the players more. That's Karina. Karina is a German player, but has been a member of the Barcelona team since at least 10 years. Yeah, she lives she in Barcelona and, st and uh, probably is part of the, the team forever. <laughs> um, well, they just lost the ball, going to recover it. Also, very, I mean, she's from the national team, very experienced. She has been playing since, his, since she was 15 and she's now 30, so 15 years. Um, and it's one of those players that really make a big difference and probably in a, in a team like Barcelona that might not have that many experience I think, players. I think from, uh, from the pure physical uh, uh, might, from the force, uh, Denmark is superior, but uh, Barcelona is faster. But they have to score, they have to go uh, uh, forward to, to succeed against Denmark. Um, because if the game goes on, probably they will lose uh, their their power and well, their ability to swim. Now it's one against three right now. I mean, I'm surprised that Copenhagen, the girl from Copenhagen attacked three to one in possession of the ball, lose the ball, and still Barcelona is in possession of it. So not very efficient. Uh, still in the middle field. Mm, Barcelona players are not really diving. It's not a good uh, sign when you let you know your play <laughs> your mates under water for a long time. They are then playing too static right now. They're not moving, and they just lost the ball. Recover it. It's just a little bit chaotic on both sides. One against three, and you normally should in the data know that you know we are going to score. York is watching and listening what I'm saying, so I need to say the right thing hopefully so there was a question uh, in the chat if you have a replay no we have a new camera system so uh, in the last years we always have a replay of the uh, goal. scoring uh, goal scenes right now we don't we're sorry about that but uh, hopefully the picture is uh, the, the Barcelona you see had much stole better the basket of uh, Copenhagen but the Danish girls are not really very impressed about that because they were control of the ball on the close corner uh, still fighting, they recover the ball, they're trying to swim towards the Barcelona side and we can see in the surface apparently they're coming with a counter-attack but the Barcelona uh, attackers are trying to recover. Now we have an attack <coughs> from above and let's see if the attackers can recover that ball. Yes, they're pulling to the surface, having a closer... But, but these are dangerous situations when you have only a defender and no goalkeeper there, and there's a cluster above it. The ball can always drop, and if you have a fast player going down, yeah. like in this situation, it's always dangerous. Uh, call from the referee, free throw... Against... Against Barcelona. Barcelona. And, and, and the one of the, the Danish, Danish players try to steal the basket, steal the basket but she has her elbow in the basket that should be a call and uh, they execute the free throw but cannot get through stopped right above the basket um, now we are on the close side getting around <laughs> you wants me to be careful 
You're watching on me. <laughs> yeah. Jörg, I will Let's be careful. See if, if I learn my lesson from him. <laughs> so, a cluster again, um, right on the surface over the Spanish basket. And uh, they, they, there is no back and forth. Um, that's every that's dangerous. That's a dangerous situation. No defender, no goalkeeper. And the cluster right above the basket called from the referee. Yeah. Free throw against Denmark. So this is a that's chance for Barcelona to get away from their own basket. It is an intense game, yeah, because uh, I think, like I said, Denmark is quite physical. They go in uh, with a lot of strength. Yeah. And I think they are stronger in, 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 in what you see in bodily strength uh, than, than Barcelona. Barcelona is a little well, bit more agile, you more... You think? Yeah, okay. for me it looks like... Ah, Jörg says yes. Thank you, Jörg. <laughs> I <laughs> always love it if you side. agree. So side. Denmark <laughs> is uh, in ball position, Counter now counter-attack. This is fast, uh, almost one-on-one, -on -one, but uh, last second stopped by uh, the forechecking of... Uh, Barcelona and now Denmark tries to build up their attack pattern uh, but they go well. backwards and uh, try to start from the close side from the corner uh, on the close side of the basket there's already a player waiting there and uh, now the ball is already uh, is, is again in the, the middle of the pool and again call from the referee pushing hold pushing without ball and uh, this is a free throw against uh, Denmark, and one of the Spanish oh, players the Spanish steals player away the basket. the basket. She's Denmark. lying with the stomach of the basket, which is quite unusual. Normally, you, you even if you steal it away, but it's yeah, it's easier it's like this. It in, it's better if you lie on your so, back. So, but the attack, it, the, it the problem with an action like this, you always use a player in the game for the attack. Well, the if you cannot get through. I know, lack behind. but you try to do it fast. I mean, this is... Uh, you need to know, I mean, after three seconds, nothing happened, you can go away. But uh, a lot of teams have a score in that mar in that way, so it's, it's valid. So this this, this is... Uh, the, the defense of Spain is breaking more and more in these attacks yes. from the, from yes. the Danish... And you see the hold. Yeah. yeah, you yeah, see the... the no, the no pass, no goalkeeper, no yeah. defender. Now they are there. So it, it takes more and more time, yeah. yeah. And eventually, if they continue like this, it could be that they... Uh, and I, I think on the physical a level, a uh, Denmark uh, is dominant, but on the on the uh, team play swimming level, Spain succeeds uh, on keeping the game under control. But if yeah. they have uh, more attacks, but like we've seen... You know what? It's a little bit comparable to the game which I saw between Orcas and Finland. Probably, yes, yeah. Barcelona is, right. is holding, holding, holding. Um, uh, Denmark is a little bit more dominant so 20 right seconds now. left and a free throw against Denmark. So either Barcelona can break the game and, and start dominating more because what they're doing right now is not doing their game but holding the game of the Danish girls a little bit more. Karina is just got the... Karina is one that can stay there long and sadly, sadly the first time is over but it was a good attack you might having uh, the chance of a goal if the first time wasn't finished now we have three minutes break between the first and the second time they are playing two times uh, ten minutes and uh, three minutes break in between Paul left me alone and then we have five minutes in between games so what I was saying before about hockey and rugby is that um, more here in Europe we tend to play rugby and, and we don't swim as much if you compare the Colombian way of playing they uh, use the term around they use more the space uh, we tend to swim a little bit more straight so when you play hockey um, hockey normally is played in a 25 meter length pool by 12.50 and you need to be always in contact with the puck and it's um, 2 to 3 meters in deep. So you need to bend a lot, you need to swim and bend and be very very fast and um, that my experience is that when I've trained a lot of hockey and I return to rugby then 
you have a different way of swimming and moving. It really is it's a very good training. It makes you faster and more agile. Uh, if I compare um, normally the way we have here in Germany to play. So uh, in Barcelona, they have a very good um, hockey team. And I know there are some players that play both uh, sports. So that could be a benefit on the Barcelona side. Um, the Orcas tend to have a mixture of the elements of hockey in the three-dimensional uh, of, the, of the rugby. And this is because at the beginning, their trainer, I mean, we're talking 15 years ago or so, he was a very good hockey player. So um, he put some elements of the hockey in the rugby. And this is the way where we have this particular way of dancing on the water, why I can describe the Colombian way of, of swimming and moving the ball around. So rugby players, if you have hockey in your cities, go and take a look because it's, it's a nice, um, yeah, it could be a, a, a good effect on the training uh, to apply on, on rugby. So right now we have, uh, let me see, um, the next 10 minutes and after that is coming Molde versus Malmö Triton. In the very past used to be one of the classical Sweden against Norway. Okay, the second time start and uh, Denmark got the ball. Now we are still in the middle and Barcelona got it back and trying to free the ball to swing towards the Danish basket, still still fighting in the middle, still a lot of swimming. Mm. Oh well, Danish girls got the ball and trying to have a counter attack and it's just the goalkeeper alone with three Danish and that was a goal. That if you are three against one, that should be a goal. Uh, it cannot be uh, any other way, otherwise you did a, a wrong attack. That's a pity because uh, they were doing a very good game and okay, 1-0, still 9 minutes to go, but because it has been already too much uh, on the edge and the Danish girl have been dominated a little bit mm, to achieve one goal for Barcelona might not be that easy. So let's see if they can start moving a little bit more and dominating the game. But if the second time is like the first time, then I believe uh, Denmark is going to win the game. So I'm also back in the game. Um, sometimes it's good to be away for some minutes and to look again if something changed. Right now um, we are in the middle of the pool and we have a cluster going up to the surface. Um, but uh, in this game, the clusters always dissolve quite fast. And uh, the game evo in, in, uh, evolves again into swimming and not this pure physical holding. Call from the referee. Free throw Let's against Let's see how Kaffee the Hagen. Danish girl play now. If they would try to play a more safe way or to continue trying to achieve another. Misunderstanding with the referee, still free throw against Denmark. Uh, probably the two meter zone was not respected um, by the Danish player. And here we go, free throw executed and Again, already called by wrong. the referee. Um, there's always a little this probing, this testing, if you can go in this two meter zone and disturb the execution of the uh, free throw. Yeah. Um, Normally the referees uh, don't punish that. In this case, it looks like the call was made very yeah, fast. But the problem is because we don't stop the time, then things like that take in you know, a whole minute again. What, what's, what's and wrong? again, the call probably the ex the the one uh, executing the free throw was moving. No, she didn't move or no, I didn't see it if she moved. I think this uh, is this Bob Robinson. Uh, the problem is, you know, you lose a lot of time because we don't, I mean, this is running time and Barcelona wants to achieve a goal, wants to continue playing, is trying to 
execute the free throw fast. Okay, timeout. Someone asked for the timeout. We cannot see which is the team. So, um, yeah, I think. What what is your prediction for the rest of the game? Huh. <laughs> well, I think if uh, Copenhagen continues to do their game, they will win. And that's the thing. If they change their tactic and they start being more in a defending mode and not trying to continue the game, and Barcelona can recover and, and start a consequent attack because the Danish just concentrate on defending, maybe they have a chance. But if, if Denmark continues the game the way they're doing it right now, I believe they should win. If that's yeah. a matter. I mean, we should not. That's the, the but decision. It, but it was an interesting change from the beginning because in the beginning I'd, I'd say um, uh, Spain was was the faster, more agile team. But now the the physical strength of the Danish players uh, come through and they they um, succeed in keeping the the Spanish players just away from their basket. Well, Karina is coming, but she has three Danish. I guess they know her. <laughs> They won't yeah, let her I alone with so the Yeah, I think so too. I think they, they spot, uh, um, it's always like this, uh, you spot the, the players. Now the, the referees seem to get really hard into the game and uh, uh, free throw against... Oh, and one of the Barcelona girls stole the basket of the Danish. Yeah, free throw against Let's Denmark. See. Karina is coming and the Barcelona This is a good is chance there. if she can get the Denmark ball through, but she was... With everything they Stopped yeah. and now there's no goalkeeper on the goal, but we have a cluster right on top of the surface over the goal. And uh, Spanish girls don't succeed in, in breaking free to attack. Um, and this is what where, where the physical strength, I think, comes through. The, the Danish can hold the ball and... Uh, um well, this is what, what I mean. I mean, if they want just the, the, the time to go by, then you just hold that ball until the... the the time's up and another call from the referee um, trying there to was a grip the to the throat again. free throw against Denmark and okay they have three four of the Barcelona girls are coming with everything this they have but Denmark already got the ball and is trying to start a counter attack the, the attack was too slow there was a good player position on the open side but the yeah, the the, but the ball carrier you didn't you see them. Tell, you could tell that they were like un insecure about where yeah. they were doing. I mean, you could tell the body language on the water. Um, this is so important. When you're trying to achieve a goal, then you really <laughs> uh, have to look that you want to do it and know that you don't know what you're doing. Because as a goalkeeper, then if you don't see uh, that this person know what he's doing, then you, you are not under stress and then you can recover the ball. The body language is so, so important in rugby. Okay, now, oh, they just lost the ball. Barcelona already sold the basket again, but uh, they're fighting in the surface. And I believe Denmark is going to keep that ball in the surface as long as they can, push them away. The cluster is uh, a little bit less than four minutes to go, and... Um, they're trying to start a counter-attack towards Barcelona basket. They're coming through. Still a lot of fight in the middle. Um, Denmark recovers the ball and is trying to come through the middle. But Barcelona is doing a good job at least holding them there, even though it's a little bit chaotic. But now we are three meters away from Barcelona basket on the close corner and the defenders and uh, goalkeeper are in position but Denmark is coming and trying to attack from above they are stopped and uh, Barcelona got the ball and trying to start a counter attack Karina I believe I cannot see uh, is going through in the middle to continue but it's taking too long I mean, in order to achieve a goal against them, I need to start counter-attack much, much faster because now that they just got into position, uh, it's just not uh, 
easy. But now we have the ball and just one. Of, but that player from Barcelona, I don't know what he was doing. I mean, it was such a pity because for a, for a second, on one on one, and in a situation like this, you need to score. Every player needs to be in the in the position that they know what to do when they are one on, uh, in a one against one fight. Because that that's the chance. That was the chance for Barcelona to to score. And when you miss such a chance, sometimes you don't have two of the same. So now, but Karina stole the basket of the Danish, but you know, Denmark don't even care actually. They concentrate on stealing the ball and just swimming it away as fast as they can from their basket. And now they are starting a counter attack, and the Danish had the goalkeeper for a little bit, but uh, the player from Barcelona could recover. But now it's the goalkeeper alone and two of the Danish, and it, that cannot be that it's not a goal. It's two against one. Again, normally that should have been a score. We have one and a half minutes to go. And it's a free throw against Copenhagen. Maybe the last chance, let's see if Barcelona can keep the ball and keep coming in the attacks and, and build maybe a couple of waves and see if they can at score, but that would be it. I mean, this this is it. If they don't manage to attack and do the score right now, then they will lose this game. And we have the defender into position, the goalkeeper is into position. They are fighting on the close corner and the surface. But again, Denmark recovered the ball. And yeah, it's one of the players of the Danish team that have a it's a light blue uh, swimming suit that it looks like white. And now the Danish is fighting again with the goalkeeper of Barcelona. And that was uh, almost a goal. Uh, even uh, the Barcelona goalkeeper lost the basket for a, for a minute there. But the, the, the team was fighting with everything they had to uh, stop a, sc a score. And they succeed on that. They're still fighting. 20 seconds to go. It's quite a chaos. I mean, Denmark is coming with everything they have, and Barcelona is doing what they can. Not really being in control of the position. They're just diving in and trying to stop. The goalkeeper, I believe, just kick a little bit uh, the attacker. I don't know what the referee is. Um, I mean, that's the end of the game. So 1 0 for Copenhagen. And now three minutes until the next game. So now we have Molde against Malmo coming up. Wolf has left me alone. It's revenge because I was late today. But Barcelona has been done a great uh, game. Just 1-0 is a very good score in the past. They have been building up uh, since the last uh, years they have been coming and uh, they're getting better and better. Please welcome, Please welcome Eva. Um, in our team, she's doing the uh, Facebook work now. She took pictures in the, in the pool area. She will upload them on Facebook as soon as we have a connection here. Um, so, there's missing one little cable, but... One little cable is missing. Yeah. Now, there are a lot of cables, I know, but not the right ones. So, yes, there was a 1-0. There was a 1-0 um, at the end of the game. The end, 1-0, yes. And um, Barcelona couldn't really recover. They had a good chance. They were, uh, and they had a couple of minutes, they were attacking but they couldn't really control the game at all. I mean, Denmark knew very much what they were doing. They were always breaking the attacks, recovering the ball and swimming uh, towards the Barcelona goal. So, no, I mean, but Barcelona did a, did a good job uh, defending. And again, 1-0 in the past, normally they have lost for 10-0 or something like this, very uh, higher marks. And right now, uh, 1-0 against Denmark. Denmark is also a very experienced team. They have been coming to the Champions Cup since ever, maybe, yeah, 15 years or so. I remember when we used to play against them as well. So they have some very experienced players. 
So uh, right here, the the whole team of the Orcas uh, is coming in. Come, come in the picture, People guys. Just a second. Coming to visit us here. So we are not These are the Orcas who just played uh, against Finland. Three zero. Yeah. <laughs> they are happy to be with us.